stories of horror, greed, and murder. Mythologies of creatures, cultures from the deepest bayous and the thickest of woods, rumors of ghosts and witches. These are the tales and legends of the Deep South, weaved together through the tapestry of time, out of the dreams of those long past. This is Waking Ribbons. Ghost Cards by Alice Osborne Dedicated to Charlie Lang and Ernest Green, who were lynched in Shibuta, Mississippi in 1942. The white girl's eyes are gray. The boys scared her, so they wouldn't be invisible anymore. She told, and now their prison cell is gray. The new paint slow to cover chipped walls. Gray zeros bombed the Arizona last December. Gray is the ash from Auschwitz, seeking the sky for final release. Gray is the dove's breast, as she bleats, You die, you die, you die. Gray in their grandmother's shawls. Gray hair sliding from thin buns. The white girl's father spits gray tobacco juice after he knocks down the fat sheriff and throws a gray blanket over his swollen head. He couldn't stop the twenty men. The mob wanted the boys right there and then. Gray is the pavement outside Manny's garage, where they stole the tires, as a joke. Rubber's such a war treasure. Gray is Charlie's house sitting up the muddy banks of the flooded creek. Gray is Ernest's uncle's suit he'll wear to the hasty burial. Gray as Robert Johnson, singing rambling on my mind. Gray is the hanging bridge, whose camelback through truss span works gray bile to the boys' mouths. Gray is the coiled rope, cutting their fourteen-year-old necks. Two pendulums swing over the gray Chickasaw Way River that gushes and churns in the moonlight, a gray tornado of memory and spite. Mississippi's dark history referring to racial aggression and unjust actions of vigilante individuals is deep. Civil rights has always been a thing of contention. The state of Mississippi, thanks to endless stories, books, and movies, is synonymous with racism, the Ku Klux Klan, and senseless, unjustified killing of African Americans, somehow more than any other state. And though this idea about the state can be incorrect in certain areas of the state, there is one place that is famous, or rather infamous, for its unjust treatment of African Americans. In Shibuta, Clark County, Mississippi, a town of less than 1,000 people, there is a bridge. It looks like the most desolate, run-down, eerie, and unsafe bridge in America, blocked off by barricades and unfit for anyone to cross. And for some, this is more than just a feeling. The Hanging Bridge, on the east side of town, has a past so dark some stories are still yet to be told. A young NAACP representative in 1918 went into the office of then-Governor Theodore Bilbo, at that time, the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People was only ten years old and had formed after the 1908 race riot in Springfield, Illinois. The representative asked for an official investigation into the hangings of four black farm workers that were lynched from a railroad bridge in Shibuta. Two of them were brothers. Major Clark was just twenty years old, and Andrew Clark was sixteen. Two of them were sisters. Alma Howes was 16 years old and eight months pregnant. And Maggie Howes, just 20 years old, was six months pregnant. In total, the event killed six people. For what, you might ask? The four young people were accused of killing a white dentist, Dr. H. L. Johnston, at his family home, where the four of them all worked on the farm. The scene was brutal. To quote the Wikipedia page, Maggie was smashed in the face with a wrench. All four were thrown from the bridge, but Maggie caught on to the bridge and survived the initial attempt on her life. 
when she was thrown from the bridge a second time she again grabbed a railing the mob hauled her up a third time and were finally successful in throwing her over and hanging her when the victims were buried the next day witnesses reported seeing alma house's unborn baby moving in the womb the governor's answer to the request for a formal investigation into the lynchings in shibuta which is recorded into history and it is historically consistent with the feeling of bigots was and i quote go to hell the naacp hired a white investigator to look into the matter the following is what he found also please forgive the commentary on the conditions of life in those times the subject is personal to many many southerners as this was a very dark time in our history and most of us like most people in the united states have learned from past mistakes now on to the story the entire situation seems to have stemmed from johnston's jealousy of the interest the brothers had with the sisters johnston known to be quite lecherous with many women in town black or white including those in his employ was jealous of the romantic relationships developing between the men that were working on his farm and the women he allegedly liked to rape literally rape non-consensual forcible sex put upon helpless black women who could not go to the authorities due to the social status in which they were born and ladies and gentlemen in some places that social status still stands and not just in the southern united states anyway dr johnston was believed by many including his family to have been shot by a white man likely in response to him sleeping with his wife we must remember that in this time in american history even white women were second-class citizens as their husbands had every right to commit them into a psychiatric ward where hysteria was still a viable diagnosis if they refused to comply with his wishes the four black young people were hanged instead because actual police investigations took too long for the ignorance of the mob forming no charges were filed the murders of charlie lang and ernest green in 1942, in the midst of patriotism and dying young men in World War II, two black teenagers, Charlie Lang, 15 years old, and Ernest Green, 14 years old, were seen speaking to a 13-year-old white girl they knew from being local teenagers together. The story is a bit less than accurate as to what was happening in broad daylight in the street out in public, but what was reported to the girl's father was that the two boys attempted to rape her. The boys were arrested by the county sheriff Lloyd McNeil. At the hearing, possibly done in the residence of the judge, the boys supposedly confessed to the rape. Though this is questionable, as the judge's residence, a white judge at that, is hardly a place of impartiality. Two days later, on October 12, 1942, Quitman Town Marshal G. F. Dabbs gave the prisoners to a mob of white men. The two children were brought to Shibuta Bridge, where they were castrated while still alive, and hanged. As he lay in his deathbed, former Sheriff Lloyd McLean expressed his regret for the murder of the two boys. Unfortunately, the damage had already been done. Somehow, the Shibuta Bridge became a symbol for white supremacy. The KKK used it as intimidation to suppress black voters, along with other voter suppression tactics. The history of lynchings on the Shibuta Bridge exceed those that were mentioned here. But the idea that bigotry is alive and well still stands. We need to remember the bridge and what it stood for. Eventually, the bridge was also used in the march towards civil rights as a symbol of power for our African Americans. We shall overcome. Overcome bigotry, hate, ignorance, and disenfranchisement. We will be free of these things one day. Probably not in any of our lifetimes here on earth. But one day. We have to believe that. And keep pushing toward it like the survival of our species depends on it. Thanks everyone for watching. I do apologize for the delay of a new video. 
Life got in the way, as it does. But I'm so happy you all have stuck with me. Many, many special thanks to Alice Osborne for her generosity for sharing her poem with you all. If you want to check out her work, the link is in the description. She is a very talented writer and generous individual. Remember to be kind and compassionate with one another, no matter your background or shade of skin. Take care of each other, and I'll see you real soon.